Hey, hey, welcome to this week's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I'm your host, Jen with Well, I do know my name. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. And I'm here with my friend, Linda Sidhu. And today we're talking about how content and quizzes interact together and mash up together. And I brought Linda on because she's an expert in quizzes, but she, I want you to understand, like, if you're thinking about creating a quiz as part of your funnel to attract more leads into your world, and you want to grow your list this way, it is an amazing um, resource for you. And there's, it's quite a journey and Linda knows everything about it. So I asked Linda to come on because in our content lives, we are always growing our audiences. That's our goal, but we also have to nurture our audiences. And the beautiful thing about a quiz is it helps people who come into your world feel very comfortable right away because the quiz helps them see themselves. And if you've been thinking about creating a quiz, I want you to hear what Linda has to say so that you have all of the scoop that you need. I'm going to talk to you about Linda as we go along, but you just need to know she's incredible. She's very knowledgeable and she has helped me an immense amount. So Linda, woo, that was quite a mouthful. Thank you for sitting through that introduction. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, Jen. I'm so excited to be here and talk about one of my favorite things, which is quizzes segmenting and um, eventually communicating to sell your audience with your amazing offers. Yeah. So Linda, can you tell us a little bit about your history and how you came to be the, the quiz maven that you are? Yeah. So uh, I was in the pharmaceutical industry for about 10 years. During that time, I worked with a very small company at the beginning of my time, and they uh, had people from DISC come out during our training. Mm -hmm. And we spent about a week really understanding different personality types because they wanted us to go into our doctor's offices with confidence, but they wanted us to understand the personalities of our doctors. So we could show up in a way that was comfortable to them and communicate our products and how to use them for their clients. At the end of the day, it was a phenomenal approach because in business, it's definitely important to build the relationship first. So it allowed me to be myself by building relationships because I'm very relationship oriented, but it also, because they are the expert, I wasn't telling them like, you know, Hey, you need to use my product because more than likely they've probably done studies on a similar product that works just the same. Right. Mm. But understanding who someone is and communicating to them in a way that feels good to them really makes sales easy. And when I applied that to the pharmaceutical industry, I was top 10 in sales, like pretty much every year. Wow. And I didn't try to sell. I was really just building the relationship, people reading the doctors and trying to understand them. But when I had my son, I hung up my heels <laughs> and was no longer in pharmaceutical sales and was a stay-at-home mom. But I knew that I was always an entrepreneur at heart and I wanted to launch my own business. And when I did, I launched my email marketing business with a quiz, a personality quiz. And it only made sense to rely on what I knew from pharmaceutical sales and how to attract the right leads, segment people based on personalities. And then I knew how to communicate and understand who I was serving better. And then I could sell to them. And that's kind of where the whole quiz thing got started because, um, I think I nailed it and people started sharing it. People got excited. It was right around the time where quizzes were really hot. And so one thing led to another and that's how I'm here. What was your first quiz? Oh gosh, it was, uh, it was, um, it was a music quiz. Okay. And it was, uh, the results were Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, or Adele. And I think we called it, um, your legendary personality for email, mm-hmm. for email marketing, like what's your legendary personality. And, um, in the quiz, I actually used the theme of music a lot because I'm really into music. I've always been, and I even had a playlist in there for fun. I mean, I would do things differently now, yeah. but at the time, uh, that was the first one I launched and it was quite successful even though like looking back, I'm like, I would never do what I just did, <laughs> but it's all good. Well, I think the part of this, this part of your story is really interesting because you leaned into like your personality, you you're very relational. So you leaned into that and you also kind of trusted yourself that like your intuition that, 
oh, there's something more here for me. And I don't need to go back to putting on my heels and going into doctor's offices, but I can turn it into something else. And I think that's a really important message to keep reminding solopreneurs of because we're just constantly iterating in our businesses, our messaging, our who we're, who we're serving, et cetera. So I love that part of your story. Thank you. And honestly, there is something to that. Like I kept at the beginning trying to figure out, well, how does the, how do I launch something? How do I write an email? How do I write a sales sequence? How do I write a sales page? And to be honest with you, I went, I took so many courses. I learned from so many different people. I did, was in different mastermind groups. And really how I do things now was based on the success I had in pharmaceutical sales. Yeah. And I apply that knowledge to what was successful in person to what could be in successful and be successful online now. And that seems to be working for me more than any of the other stuff. <laughs> Again, going back to that thing of like, what works for you? What can you let go of? And I've just been writing about this a lot lately. Like um, we see what's working for somebody else and we're like, oh, then that will work for me. But it doesn't always work out that way. We really have to bring our particular you-ness into, into this. So I, I know we're going to talk a lot more about this, um, but I want to get into the nuts and bolts of the important things when you're creating a quiz as part of your, um, you know, as part of the lead magnet that you're going to have or the, or the funnel you're creating. So tell us, where is, where is the place that we need to start when we're thinking about creating a quiz? So where you need to start is your offer. Mm. And you have been in Quiz Lab, so you kind of know that from the beginning because everything stems off of your offer. Yeah. Because if you want to attract mm -hmm. your clients, where are you going to take them? Um, so one of my, you know, it, it, favorite quizzes really was like, were you born to be an influencer? This is a great example because not everybody wants to be an influencer, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for this particular quiz example, she was, it was about two or three years ago where influencers were really popular on um, Amazon and Instagram and all that was going on. Yeah. And people were asking this girl, like, how do you be an influencer? How do you? And so she literally created a course based on the DM questions she was getting because she was kind of doing that with her own life, her own business without really trying so hard. <laughs> um, so she realized, well, maybe I should put, create a course on how to become an influencer. And so we knew that she was going to sell a course on um, how to, you know, how to influence and how to take advantage of that um, side of things. And so that's where the quiz title was born. Were you born to be an influencer? And I will tell you that people who didn't want to be an influencer were not taking that quiz. Of course. I was just thinking like, I would never even take that quiz. Like I would opt out of that person's world, which is exactly what you want. Exactly. So Brilliant. you're really trying to attract the right leads, quality leads. And um, at the time when she launched this quiz, uh, there was a lot of things that happened, but two things that really um, stand out. One is Facebook ads were really, really popular at the time. And probably so pretty cheap, she, right? Oh, she just cleaned house. I think she got like <laughs> 10,000 people to Woo! sign up in a month. It was ridiculous. But twofold, her actual Facebook account got hacked into and she lost her entire social media platform, oh, wow. Instagram, Facebook, her Facebook page. So she was able to build her email list in the nick of time. And she sold her quiz course via email from the quiz that she created before all that happened. Yeah. But it was like a lesson learned. But of course, Facebook ads are a little different now. Totally. You can still use them. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you do a paid advertisement or if you do organic approach to lead generation. Mm -hmm. The title of your quiz is really going to attract the quality clients. And then you can go from there to um, offer up your offer and sell to them what they want. Starting with the end in mind. That's what you're saying. It's like, if you don't know where you want people to go, a quiz is probably not right for you at this moment. That's probably right. not your number one problem to solve for. Yes, I agree. I hate to say it. And now to be honest with you, I think I created my quiz not knowing like the ins and outs. So, I, but so if you do something, you're still going to take missteps along the way, which will lead you to the right result anyway, eventually. True. But in a perfect world, if you want to create a quiz, you should probably have a validated offer. Yeah. So I've, I heard you say when you were talking about that quiz that she was able to grow her email list. Um, what are some of the other benefits of having a quiz in your back pocket? 
Yeah. So you can have a quiz as a lead generation, which we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. You can also have a quiz as a backend offer to help your clients even more. Um, you can use quizzes as research uh, to understand your clients a little bit better. You can use a quiz in so many different ways, honestly, but those are probably the two best ways is like lead generation. That's usually why people hire me. They want to put it out there to get people to attract uh, and grow their email list. But I have thought about doing a back end quiz where, you know, for me, people want a quiz. But once they have a quiz, now they want to know how do I promote the quiz? Yeah. So a back end offer for me would look something like this, where we would um, basically say, you know, from a vision to visibility or something like that. Like, what's your vision to visibility? And I would have a back end quiz to take people further along the journey on how to promote themselves, how to promote their quiz once they actually have a quiz. So that would be like a back end quiz. Yeah. Um, but again, Quizzes are research for you. They help you understand your client, who they are, what they identify with. And um, you can really do a lot of research in that, which is super helpful as a business owner. You can segment your email list based on personalities. You can see what personality is showing up most. And then you could take that knowledge and tweak it so you can communicate with them. So a great example of this was Helena, right? Yeah. For the TEDx speaking coach quiz that I did. She's a very dominant personality, but she was attracting the complete opposite, very heart-centered people that wanted to take, you know, they wanted to take the stage and share their message. And because of this, she had to do things opposite of what she probably would have watched anyways, would do. right? right? So the sales page had a lot more, um, she had a lot more testimonials, things that really, you know, almost she had to sell to a low, low approach, low approach to sales. Yeah. She had to, instead of like really trying to get that action taker, like, you know, fear of missing out, she didn't capitalize on that. She really capitalized more on a low approach to her sales, mm -hmm. which helped her sell out her course at the time. So when you make your quiz, you're using the disc personality, um, all of the brilliance that you have with that, you're infusing that into your quiz mm -hmm. so that when somebody comes in, you're like, oh, this is a dominant person. They're going to take action fast. They might be more aligned to this offer and this kind of copy. And if they're tagged that way on your list, you can really nurture them with that. Or if they're tagged with the I or the S, um, they're going to need different things like a slower approach to sales, maybe a more gentle approach, all of that stuff. So what I'm hearing you say is this is all very intentionally crafted, but at the core are two things. The first is your offer on the end. And really the second is how you craft those questions and everything that comes after it based on the disc stuff that you're an expert in. Correct. And yeah. if you want to talk about the disc, if you guys are not familiar with it, you're either fast paced with your, with your, with taking action, mm -hmm. or you're a little bit more thoughtful with your approach. And then you're either a people oriented person or you're task oriented person. So you kind of fall into one quadrant over the other. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of the day, we embody all four personalities, mm -hmm. even though I'm more on the influencer, fast paced, people oriented side, I still am very data driven with my business and I still do a lot of research. So that is the opposite of me, right? Yeah. So you're either D for dominant, which is fast paced, task oriented. I, we're going to continue with the fast paced, but people oriented people, mm -hmm. which is an influencer. And then if you go down to the more thoughtful approach, uh, which is slower with decision-making, you have the steady personality and they are people oriented, a little bit more thoughtful with their decisions. And then the conscientious people who are analytical, they, um, decisions are driven by data. So they're a little bit more task oriented, but they're also more slower paced. And so you can really break it out into two different approaches to sales, which there's going to be the fast action takers who are gonna take action, they're ready to roll, they want options to move forward with you. Mm -hmm. Maybe they only want like a 20 minute discovery call because they already know it's pretty much a done deal. They just want to know what options are available and how much does it cost? Right, right. Whereas the opposite, the lower approach to sales personality, they're gonna want more case studies. They wanna learn how did you help somebody else achieve success? Uh, they want data to back up claims and they don't want a high pressure approach. 
they want you to back off and, you know, have a lower pressure to, and then they'll be more apt to, um, you know, convert into a client. I'm really glad you explained all that because, um, I think quizzes are thrown around in the online world, like, oh, just go make a quiz or you could just make a quiz and having gone or am going through it right now personally to make my quiz, there's a lot of moving parts. And the reason I'm staying with it is because I know the efficacy on the other side is going to be so worthwhile. I love that you talked about like the upfront quiz, but also the behind the scenes quiz, like I could imagine how to use that. Um, And so I'm just like thinking about all the pieces and parts what is a mistake that people might make when they're creating a quiz that maybe they're not thinking of? Yeah. So the three mistakes I think entrepreneurs make with quizzes is one, they, um, the first mistake is they write the results first. I'm sorry that they write the quiz questions first. Oh yeah. <laughs> Typically yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to work backwards from the result. So you kind of need to have a theme of like, where am I going to take this quiz? And once you have an idea, you want to write the result pages first. So mm-hmm. then you can ask the questions that are going to deliver the right result. Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing is a lot of people don't know how to kick off a quiz in the right way. The second way is not having, or the second mistake is not having a welcome series mm-hmm. for your, uh, uh, for your quiz takers. A lot of times people will say, take my quiz, I'll take it. And then I get dumped into their newsletter, right? Like there's, These people are really engaged when they take a quiz. So you want to take that little extra effort and welcome them into your community. And if you do this, usually I I recommend a five-part email series where you validate them as they come in, let them know like, hey, I was there too. I totally get where you're at. But you also want to share your expertise and credibility in another email where you can say, you know, but this is why you need to stick with me. And this is why I'm the expert you want to learn with. Right. Right. And then you also want to give them a quick win so you can repurpose maybe a podcast interview, Mm -hmm. uh, anything that's going to help them, maybe a previous lead magnet that worked in the past and kind of reuse it. And then the, one of the last emails is also just asking them to take the next steps and being completely blatant. My favorite part of this email is really using a case study though, Mm -hmm. shining the light on somebody else's business, showing how you help somebody else have success and then asking them to join you for the next step. And then I also like to add in a nine word email now. Um, Those are kind of fun because they increase engagement and they get people to reply, reply back. So uh, before you do the last email where you're really showing this case study and laying it on thick and asking them to take the next step, maybe you send them just like a nine word email that says, hey, are you interested in, are you still interested in creating a quiz? Write back and let me know. And then people can write back and that whitelists them for your email provider. So -hmm. when people reply back to you, when they get whitelisted, that means they're telling their platform, I want to hear from Linda. Yeah. I want to hear more from Linda, which is really good. So you can use this strategy But what you're really doing is you're building your know, like, and trust factor, Mm -hmm. which is super important. Um, And there's a lot of magic in that welcome series. And if you miss that part, you're really doing a disservice to yourself, especially if you spent a ton of time on your quiz and trying to put that together. Mm -hmm. And then the final mistake really is not knowing how to promote uh, your quiz. I feel so bad for clients. There's times where I've been hired to do a done for you quiz And they say, oh my gosh, it just didn't work, you know? And then I look at the data and because that's the thing with quizzes, you can look at data. We can take a look at what happened here because it's always data over drama. And oftentimes when I hear this, I see that people's only, that the quiz has only been taken like 60 times. Mm. Like, oh my gosh, you didn't even, you know, and out of the 60 times it had a 50% conversion rate. Well, Mm -hmm. the quiz is working. You're just not putting it in front of the right audience. You're not putting it in front of any audience, in my opinion. People, <laughs> so, right? so unfortunately, you do have to shout it from the rooftops. You really have to have energy behind it. And you almost have to treat it like it's its own launch, launch and get yeah. some energy, you know? Yeah. And that, that's, I think, a big part of the um, making the, the title so enticing because people have to want to take it. It has to be relevant to them. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my journey to decide to do a quiz, because I feel like some people might be, if you're on the fence about why to do a quiz. So I'm going to just tell, is okay if I just tell my story a little bit? hundred percent. Cause I know you went through a journey. (laughs) I, you and I've talked about quizzes before, and then you ended up joining the quiz lab. And I've always actually wanted to hear this anyway. So feel free. (laughs) So, um, 
Linda and I have known each other for a couple of years and we were also in a mastermind group together. So we knew each other professionally a little bit deeper and then we've become friends. And uh, I have a lead magnet that works really well. My freebie offer is my customized content planner. Um, it brings in great people to my list all the time, but it does not. And I said this to you many times. I'm like, I don't think I need a quiz. I have this great lead magnet and it does what it needs to do. And it actually solves the problem so well for people that they often don't think they need anything else after that. And so I just, you know, I just keep putting it out there because it's such a great tool, but it doesn't segment people for me. And that's what I need because on my list, um, I need to know, is your particular struggle that you don't know how to write copy, that you don't have a clear message or your systems are keeping you from being consistent. And if you're missing any one of those pieces, you're going to fall down. So my goal is to have my quiz kind of be able to segment that for me. And, uh, it was a hard decision to make because when you have something that you've spent a lot of time on works pretty well, but there was still a piece missing for me. And I knew that with the high level of, um, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Per personalization that a quiz does for you. I knew that I could solve that problem for me. The thing is making a quiz is not a quick solution. And I wanna tell people, if you're thinking about a quiz, there are a lot of moving parts and I would encourage you to connect with Linda. And that's why I brought her on because she's the quiz expert. I am not a quiz expert. Like I'm a nurture sequence expert. I'm a nurture content expert, but I am not going to be able to get you your quiz. Linda can. And it's a really powerful um, way to connect with your audience. So that's why I really wanted to share this part of my story, because you might not think you need a quiz, but if you feel like you're putting out there and putting out there and putting out there and you don't have enough information about your people, a quiz can give you a lot of information about your people. And I think you just hit the nail on the head. And it's something I've been seeing with all my quiz lab members is the clarity that comes from it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an underlying benefit that I started to expose a little bit more is a lot of people come to me and they don't necessarily have that clarity, but it gets revealed through the quiz process because you're doing a ton of research and you're really getting to know your clients on a different level. And you're taking that time to really serve them what they need. And um, through that, you go through this transformation where you come out with clarity on the other side. In the, in the time that you and I have been working together in Quiz Lab, which is a, which is a small group coaching program, just to clarify for everybody, um, I have realized more deeply who my audience exactly is and who they aren't, who I don't want to work with, like who I can't help, right? And that's just very freeing for everybody. Um, I've learned which kind of offers I want to put out there because it all starts with the offer and then you reverse engineer. And I was closing down my membership when we started. Mm -hmm. And so I had to really rethink like, what is that offer? I still don't have the 100% answer. Right. So that's why my quiz isn't quite done yet. Um, and I just got very clear on, again, this is something I'm already good at, but everything you do for a quiz can be repurposed everywhere across your business. So there's nothing wasted. It's like you use every single part of the ch the rotisserie chicken here. Yes. I love that part of it because you not only get to go deeper and find out about your audience because, and the way Linda teaches researching your audience makes it so easy, but the way she teaches everything, is just like, there, it's step by step by step by step. And so I wanted to have her come on and talk about, you know, and I think you've given us so much information already, but quizzes are a powerful tool in your business. Well, and we were talking about this earlier. Um, but what quizzes do is they don't only attract your audience, which that's what a lot of people, oh, you know, if you ask me, like, what's one thing that really bothers me about people mm -hmm. in quizzes is people say, oh, the BuzzFeed quiz, they're so fun. People take them. Like, it's not really that. It's more the science behind it and the segmenting yes. and the clarity that lights me up because what that transitions into is actual sales. Yeah. And that's what matters because if you can have a quiz that's attracting the right client, it will convert to sales, but it also helps you understand how to better serve your clients. So at the end of the day, why you should want a personality quiz is because you're able to attract your quality lead. You can sell out your offers and you can better serve your clients. Mm -hmm. and that's really like the underlying factors of, you know, if you look at like, uh, what do they say when you, the 
iceberg, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The top of the iceberg that's like is attracting leads, but really everything beneath the water is what I just said, like Mm -hmm. attracting quality leads, selling out your offers, and better serving your clients. And once you can get to that point, you can propel your business forward. And you didn't say this, but it's implied you're repelling the people who aren't the right fit. hundred percent. Like get rid of those people who are just like freebie seekers and tire kickers. And like, if somebody's, this is what I've been thinking about who my offers really serve. And if my offers really serve the, the D and the C personality types, okay, what do I have to do to serve the people on my list who are the S and the I types, right? Like the influencers and the steady people or opposite, you know, like whatever configuration for your business, but it just gets you thinking more critically and you can go to the facts versus the feelings of like, oh shit, nothing's working. My life sucks. My business sucks. Everything sucks. I'm going to burn it all down. And it really helps you, um, I think, be more intentional across the board in your business. Yeah. And I think what the thing is, is, so what I love about quizzes and how I kind of kick off the quiz lab in general is um, we really focus on your personality first. Yes. And why that's important is because I think the more you can lean into your own strengths, the more successful you're going to be as a business owner anyways. Yeah. And so there are certain things for me, for example, I'm an influencer type personality. And what that means to me is I enjoy challenges. I enjoy people. So maybe I wouldn't do like a webinar because that seems too like, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Like very (laughs) transactional, you know? And for me, I really like to meet people and I like to have them have success. Um, I want them to have a quick win before, you know, I want them to experience me because at the end of the day, I know when I do my three day nail your quiz idea challenges, there might be a lot of people on that first day And then maybe there's half the people on that third day, but I will tell you that challenge converts at a hundred percent for me. And the reason why is I kind of whittle out the people who aren't that interested by the third day, I've got these quality leads. We've come up with their quiz title and now we're ready to rock and roll. Let's take it to the next step. So that uh, launch mechanism actually works really well for me. And so why change it and revert to like a webinar if somebody else is like, I wouldn't want to do that. Right. But I didn't know that in business until honestly, I didn't know any of this until I lost my business. I had a previous partner and she no longer wanted to do business. We had to shut everything down. And there was a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to throw it in. And I said, I can't do this. I need to I need to move forward and just do. And I said, if I'm going to, because it's, I knew by then, like what I was getting into and how hard it was to relaunch a business Mm -hmm. (laughs) beforehand, I didn't know, but at this moment I knew. And so I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it my way. And I'm going to lean into my strengths. I'm going to hire anything else out that doesn't work. I'm just going to move forward and stay in alignment. And so that also meant like, how do I attract my clients? How do I have a launch mechanism where I can lean into my own energy and just do it? How do I serve my clients? Like everything kind of aligns with like intention. And that's how we set up, you know, your quiz to begin with, because I think that's the underlying success is you being you. Yeah. I talk about this all the time and I love that we're talking about the launch mechanism. And in case anybody doesn't know what a launch mechanism, it's the thing that you do to get a lot of people in that kind of, um, incites their engagement with you and their enthusiasm. And then it usually leads to the next thing, which could be, um, you know, like a paid offer, a paid workshop of a high touch group program, whatever it is, but the it's, it's um, there's so many in business. And for a long time, I was like, why every time I think about running a challenge, do I go, Oh my God, I just can't, I just cannot do a challenge. I just will not. And I just like, it makes me die a little inside. And once I took the disc and I realized like, Oh, I'm a high C and probably my lowest is I, you and I are like polar opposite of each yes. other. That's why we're <laughs> good there. Um, Oh, doing a three day thing for my energy is just doesn't work for me. That's why doing a training works for me. Right. It's like mm-hmm. get it done. And um, knowing all of these things about yourself, it, it's just so powerful. Cause it makes you think like, I don't know, I walk around a lot going, and maybe you, you do too. And maybe our listeners do too, but like, I walk around going a lot going like, what's wrong with me? Why am I doing it wrong? Why is this working? Is there another way? And I think that's when we start to look outside of ourselves, but this conversation, I think is like the bottom line is like you, when you look into yourself, 
everything gets aligned. It's so much easier. All the answers are already within you. I know. I'm sure you already knew that, but like, and that's why it's so important to create white space. I mean, I'm sort of forced to do that probably you too, because of dog walking. (laughs) Um, I have to walk my dog like two or three times a day. Sometimes I take her to go on hikes in nature. And actually before I start a new quiz, I typically do a really nice hike in nature Mm -hmm. to just get the creativity flowing for me because I love movement. But I also need the space and the white space. And what happens is usually after that, after I've hiked, um, I take a moment to just let see what comes and it usually something comes. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is like, instead of me seeking answers or searching at other quiz that, that might have a similar title and looking at and comparing what are they doing? I don't do that. I put the blinders up and I <laughs> create white space. I do my thing. I look within and those are where the answers come from. Yeah, that's interesting. How would you say your business has changed over the last several years when I know that you like the first time you dived into a quiz, you're like, I would never do it that way again. But how else has your business changed? You know, I just think I have more confidence Mm. in my business. And I think part of the reason why I think I have so much confidence, again, is just putting myself out there, I realize a lot of people hold themselves back. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest problem. If you just, and so for me, I think I'm, I'm very vulnerable. I make mistakes. Um, I fail a lot. There's like, if I had a story to share, if I had a podcast to launch, it would have to do something with like failing because I think like, that's my underlying story is like, I fail often and it's because I keep putting myself out there, but because I keep putting myself out there, yes, there's missteps along the way, but they also help redirect to the right direction. Totally, yeah. And because of this, I realized when I put myself in rooms, whether I go to a mastermind group in person or in Zoom, I realize I have some really good things to share. Um, and I'm not trying to compare myself to others. I just realize, like every time you put yourself out there is like a confident boost to yourself because yeah. eventually first of all, you're, you're going to get used to putting yourself out there. You're going to get used to failing and you need that grit and resilience as an entrepreneur. And if you have that, you're going to be successful because you're never giving up, right? It's that never giving up piece and knowing yourself in all the ways we talked about today in this conversation, knowing yourself in all of those ways is one of the ways to develop that confidence muscle and develop the, um, you know, the, the calluses that you need to still, yes. to still show up, even though you might like stumble or trip or feel like a jerk or be wearing the wrong thing. That's always my thing. I'm going to be, I'm going to be wearing the wrong thing. I'm never going to be able to dress right. That's always my stupid reason why I don't want to go to something. Um, so thank you for always sharing that. Here's a real technical question I want to like wrap up with, but what, what, what's like the conversion rate? Like if we could talk numbers for a second, when you do all of this work to create a quiz, what are the numbers looking like? What should so it, be? it depends. You know, I think what a good conversion rate is for any lead magnets, like right around 25%. Am I mm-hmm. right by saying that? I feel like that's what I've heard industry average. Be happy with 25%. <laughs> um, I have seen data from uh, Interact, the quiz platform, and they had put, put out recently that 40% of quizzes were getting conversion on their end. So obviously they have the data, they have a platform where you can create your quiz on. And so that is what they're saying. I know for me and the clients I work with, I, you know, I've seen as high as like 70%. That's not um, normal, but okay. we can get there. Um, anything, I would say around 40% is good. Okay. Um, I would like you to get up to 50%. Like, why not? Like, um, (laughs) but you know, you just, the cool thing is too, is there's like a, when you're looking at the conversion rate, there's a lot of things that kind of could mess with it. Right. So it's, what is your title? Are you repelling or attracting people? So sometimes people look at a title, for example, I did a quiz where it's like, what's your social selling uh, superpower. I don't know what the name was. It was something like about social selling. And so that's really implying again, um, like network marketing influencer, yeah. right? So people were looking at this quiz and they were clicking out of it, but then people were looking at the quiz and they were clicking into it. If it, it was something that they were raising their hand saying, yep, this is me. 
And that quiz, after people started it, it was converting at 50%. Wow. So even just looking at that data, like, okay, like, yes, people are clicking out of it, but you're repelling people. That's a good thing. Yes. Uh, now you just need to get it in front of the right audience a right. little bit more so you can get more people to look at it, identify with it and take it. Um, another quiz I was looking at had very high drop-off rates for the quiz questions. And I'm talking about like, you want to be around 5% or less, and you can look at this in your data and, um, 5%, 6% is fine. Anything around 10, 15, like, Hey, let's, what's going on here? Because mm -hmm. that's a high drop-off rate. Um, this was something recent that happened for a client and really it was, she had too many gifts as her, oh. I mean, it was just like very distracting, I'm sure okay. on the eye. Okay. So the answers, there was like four different answers, but they were all different gifts and they were moving around. And so she removed the gifts and the, um, the pictures and she made it more of a simple quiz. And that was all that needed, you know, to the switch. So you never know, like, is it the title? Is it the questions? Is it the gifts? Is there, is there too much yeah. movement? Um, a lot of these things can happen, but at the end of the day, I would like my clients to have at least 40% if not better. You just mentioned something that's important in all of content creation, which is there's this rule of like, don't change everything across the board. Like if something's not working, um, don't go in, change your title and change the sales page and change the welcome sequence and change all your content. Like really just change one tweak, 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 tweak. Yeah. That's when you figure out what's going wrong. Yeah. And the same thing with your launches. That's how I know that like my three day nail your quiz idea challenge works for me because mm -hmm. I went back and everybody that went through quiz lab went through the three day nail your mm -hmm. quiz idea challenge. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like, I don't need to change that in my launch. Right. What did I mess up? <laughs> Where does it need to be like, um, and really this time around, it was my sales page. I don't think my sales page um, visually represented the words I was using. And if I look at the data on my last launch, I had twice as many people view it with the same amount of purchases. Mm. So there, right there, it tells me, okay, there's something going on with the sales page. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's where the next launch I need to focus on. Um, not the challenge, not, right. you know that what I mean? Works. Don't fix what's not broken. Yeah. Correct. Um, I know that you have a lot of different ideas about where you're heading next, and I know you're just wrapping up quiz lab, but that doesn't mean that you don't have a lot of value to give for people. Um, so how can people get into your orbit? Yeah, well, I'm going to be launching quiz lab twice next year. So oh, it's I didn't know that. 2023, oh. um, I don't know when this is going to air, but I am launching in the spring and okay. then I plan to launch in the fall. Great. I love quiz lab. I actually really do have a lot of fun collaborating with quizzes. I wasn't sure if I was going to like the group coaching experience or if I just wanted to do it for people, but I'm realizing I really enjoy the group approach and collaborating with people. So yeah, I'll be launching that twice next year. And then I am offering a new offer. It's called the Mixer Mind because mm -hmm. again, at the end of the day, once people have their quiz, their next issue is how do I promote it? So I'm really getting, you know, dipping my toe into a different, you know, a little, I'm dipping my toe into the water of connection, uh, collaborations, and I'll be doing some of that next year as well. Um, and I'm really excited about it actually, because I think it's just, again, taking people to that next level, because there's really two problems I help people solve, attracting the right leads with a quiz. And then also how do I promote my quiz and get invisible my offers? Totally. Yeah. Um, I would like to just speak for a moment about my experience in quiz lab because um, I tried to hire Linda to just do my quiz for me people I tried and she had no spots available and she said why don't you just join quiz lab and I have it has been the juiciest experience it has been so Linda offers so much support and not only just information but support and then all of this additional like genius that she brings in from all of these exceptional uh, people who are in her world who like talk to us about how to create story ideas how to promote like I mean uh, it's just incredible what Linda is able to provide in Quizlab so if you are curious about a quiz if you're quiz curious and you know that 2023 is the year that you might be ready to dip a toe. I would get on, get in Linda's world. They can join your Facebook group first, right? Yeah. Facebook group is where I show up most. I don't necessarily do Instagram that much, but I'm on Instagram. Uh, they can take my quiz. 
Yes. You know, what is your quiz? How do they get there? Discover your quiz to cash strategy. It's on my website. So www.lindasadu.com. And then the quiz is on the homepage, which we'll link it. I'll give you the link to yeah. it. And then the best thing to do, if you're really interested is the three day nail your quiz idea yes. challenge. Because that's the first thing is people really want to know what should my title be? What should I do for my quiz? Um, and we try to hash that out. But to Jen's point, if you hire someone to create a quiz, you're going to miss out on all this opportunity of clarity for your business. That's so true. And that's yes. what I really encourage people to do the quiz lab because I'm forcing you, <laughs> I'm forcing people to like really um, know your like, business. Yeah. Like to look under every rock to understand their clients. And I think that is the true value of the experience. Um, and then you yeah. know how to create a quiz. You can create more in the future. You can create a backend quiz. You can tweak your quiz. Like totally. you have control over it at that point. Totally. I bet you know everything and then it's yours to keep forever. Yes. Yeah. So I highly recommend, I'm going to put all the links below in the podcast or wherever you are watching this, there will be links for you to get into Linda's world. But even if you're like, no, because I'm going to tell you for years, I was like, no, I don't need a quiz. I don't need a quiz. I don't need a quiz. I will take every quiz in the world, but I do, did not want to make one. But I just really saw the benefits of it. And uh, Linda has been a great person to partner with on that. So thanks, Linda, for being my guide through it. And also thanks for being such a generous guest today. I, I, think, it, I think people probably got a lot of information about stuff to think about if they're creating a quiz. Yeah. Anything thank you to you add? So I'm so appreciative to be here. I really am very passionate with helping entrepreneurs, because at the end of the day, it's that clarity. And I think once people have clarity, they can propel forward and just really trusting themselves is a big component of it. So thank totally. you so much for allowing thank me to you. share this. Okay. The next time you need um, somebody to get you thinking about your business, come back to this podcast because we always have great guests who are super generous and I will see you next week. Bye everyone. <laughs>